Shadow Warrior is one of the last great first-person shooters of the 90s. Developed by 3D Realms, it came shortly after the release of Duke Nukem 3D and runs quite adequately on the build engine. The protagonist is Lo Wang, a Shadow Warrior taking on the evil demonic forces of the villainous Zilla. Shortly after being ambushed at his dojo, Lo Wang sets off to put a stop to Zilla once and for all, avenging the death of his master along the way. Master Leap! What have they done? The game directly feeds off Duke Nukem 3D, obviously due to the fact that it was developed by the same team, and it's easy to see Shadow Warrior as a reskinned map pack, but that's overlooking a lot of its finer qualities and features. For starters, it probably has one of the most incredible soundtracks of its time. Composed by Lee Jackson, it is a mix of East and Western influences, much like the game itself, and the music is also matched perfectly to the action it accompanies. The levels themselves, whilst not as varied as you'd hope, are extremely large and diverse and offer lots of challenging gameplay, including underwater sections and even some basic platforming every now and then. You're not likely to see anything rehashed from Duke Nukem 3D here, and that's a good thing. 3D Realms really tried to stay as far away from what they've already achieved, and that definitely comes across. Lo Wang's arsenal also takes a huge departure from Duke's, and it stands out quite a lot from its predecessor. He has a standard ninja's gear like katana, shurikens, but Lo Wang can also weld uses either single or double-handed, a riot gun, missile launchers, even through to some truly creative weapons like the Ripper Heart, which allows you to spawn a spirit ally or the Guardian Head, which is the literal head of a fallen enemy that can spew out fireballs at a deadly rate. I must say that some of the weapons do come across a little bit useless. The Railgun and the Sticky Bomb are more for show than anything else, and Lo Wang's various ninja gadgets like the Caltrops and Gas Bombs are far too cumbersome and more trouble than they're worth, often not even doing anything noticeable during combat at all. Enemies themselves are varied and creative. Ninjas form the cannon fodder for the game, and they come in several variants. Standard ninjas will only shoot you with Uzis and throw the occasional shuriken, whereas the more dangerous enemies will launch missiles, flash bombs, and even fireballs. And then there's other enemies like the Rippers. These guys are large beast-like creatures that hop around and try to rip your face off. Everything in this game is fast and deadly. Even the goddamn mosquitoes can kill you if you're not careful. And this kind of ties in with the game's difficulty. This game is fucking hardcore. As far as first-person shooters come, they don't get much tougher than this. You won't have too much trouble on the lower difficulties, but the two top levels are truly challenging, requiring lots of quick saving and reloading. But all of the challenge here definitely feels genuine. There's a few moments here and there, obviously, where you get cheaped out, but most of the time, if you get killed, it's your own fault. Enemies often telegraph their more dangerous attacks, and it's a matter of learning these signs and reacting quickly enough to avoid getting hit. I find this sort of gameplay is much more satisfying as you learn to adapt and get into a rhythm with what works on what type of foe. It's a long way from current gen shooters, where you can pretty much finish the entire game adopting the same strategy throughout. If I had to complain about something, I guess I'd say that some of the levels are a little bit too complex for their own good. There's also a few levels where you just end up going in circles and some of the keys are often hit in obscure places. The longevity on areas like this comes from the confusion of where to go next as opposed to the actual design itself, and that kind of sucks. But I'm really nitpicking here because Shadow Warrior is a really good entry into the FPS genre. It came on the cusp of shooters going fully 3D and it kind of gets overlooked because of that. But it invented a lot of FPS hallmarks that we now take for granted. Things like being able to climb ladders, secondary fire modes for weapons, and controllable vehicles and turrets. It caused a lot of controversy when it was released for its kind of blasé approach to Asian culture, which some people saw as being overtly racist despite its obvious tongue-in-cheek tone. It's also an insanely violent game. I mean, enemies explode in chunks of blood and flesh, and they clutch onto life after being sliced in half with your katana. On top of all of that, it's got a lot of sex and nudity stuff thrown in here and there. Lo Wang soap you good! <laughs> I can see how it might be offensive to certain people, but you really have to know what you're getting into here, and the game doesn't sugarcoat what it is. I mean, the first episode is called Enter the Wang. If that doesn't give you an indication of what you're in store for, then nothing will. You are a pathetic excuse for a man. Definitely not a game for kids, but it's definitely a game for hardcore FPS fans who want a fun and violent game that doesn't give a shit how hard it is. It's available for purchase on goodoldgames.com, and if you like old school shooters, then check it out. Goodbye.